Feeling lonely and isolated is a psychosocial uh, risk and hazard within the business. And a lot of people assume that isolation and loneliness is when people are doing FIFO, working from home, and in situations where they may be working in a client's office, that they're, they're the people at risk. But I'm sure a lot of people have experienced the fact of being in a really busy room and never feeling as lonely as what they're feeling within that room. And it can be the same within the office. So if you have a look at a situation where you've got a big office and it's open plan, everyone's talking to one another, and then you've got John who is going through some relationship issues at home. He's not going to talk about it. He's a man. He's trying to work it out in in, in his head. Um, how do you know that he's feeling lonely and isolated? Because he's not going to have a big sign on his head saying lonely and isolated and where it comes really concerning is the fact that if someone's feeling lonely and isolated and they also feel that they can't talk to um, anybody about anything and that they um, aren't talking to anybody because they feel they can't talk to anybody they become a very high risk individual because what becomes breaking point for him or her. So when we're looking at mental health risks and, and psychosocial risks and hazards within the business, it's also looking about, okay, there are going to be external factors that are going to impede on someone's mental well-being. What does that look like? How does that play out? How are we capturing them? Because if it comes back on an assessment that we do that someone is feeling isolated and, and lonely, the first thing I start doing is start having a look at demographics. Who are they? Where are they? What, you know, what, what level are they? Um, so that I can then start putting that lonely and isolation into perspective. And then it's like, okay, so what can we do as a company to encourage conversation, to encourage him to talk or her to talk um, and reduce the feeling of isolation and loneliness? Um, to reduce the risk uh, for him because until he talks, he's going to remain a high risk. So how are we going to reduce that risk? What does that look like within your business? So if you've got any questions on this, as always, feel free to, to reach out. I'm more than happy to help. Um, but it's really important to start looking at what's going on underneath the blanket of the everything's fine face um, and to really understand how people are feeling um, because how we feel you know is is comes from what we're thinking and what we're thinking and how we're feeling then plays out in how we act and depending on how busy this gets you know the the safety risks if you've got someone working out machinery um, someone driving home and their mind's not on it you know for us to look at how can we get people the support and feel that they can get the support um, when they need it. What does that look like? So if you've got any questions, as always, feel free to reach out. Until the next time, take care.